You want to have Gen AI Activities is a new activity pack that's available for use in Studio Web and Studio Desktop. It's a collection of activities that interact directly with large language models that are hosted and managed by UiPath internally. The UiPath Gen AI Activities Pack is a technically integration service connector. So you can find it in integration service. However, the difference is that these activities interact directly with first party services managed by the UI, unlike other connectors that work with third party APIs. The UiPath Gen AI activities interact with UiPath services. This is a new concept for UiPath, but should become much more common in the future. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how the Gen AI activities work what they're meant to do, and a little bit about the, the future of Gen AI activity. So if you come into a studio web process, you will be able to find all of the activities under the UiPath Gen AI activities name moniker. All of the activities that we currently support are here. The first activity that I'm going to discuss is something that should look somewhat familiar to users to have experience with the other Gen AI connectors. By other Gen AI connectors, things like OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, and AWS Bedrock, Google Vertex, there's a, a, a wide variety of Gen AI connectors that we support that allow users to use their own instance of these services and uh, directly submit requests to those third party model um, and, and use the outputs in Studio Web and your desktop. Um, again, this is going to be a little bit different because these Gen AI activities are working with models that we manage internally. So the first activity I'm going to talk about is content generation. This should look somewhat familiar to you who are familiar with the Gen AI connector. In that, you can build a prompt however you like. So the prompt, again, is the question or series of context and information that you're submitting to a large language model with the intent of getting an output and using that output directly in your workflows. A lot of many use cases can be accomplished by building a, a, a custom prompt. You can use variables, right? So I would be able to use any of the variables within my workflow in this prompt. I could use arguments. And in that way, you can really make your prompts completely dynamic. And so this is very similar to the Gen AI connectors in the sense that, again, you have full control over the prompt and you can select any model that UiPath offers support for very easily. So the model name is a little bit different in the sense that we will offer models from many different vendors, both closed and open source models will or should be available here in the future. Right now, you'll see things from Azure OpenAI and uh, Google Vertex. We'll also be adding multimodal models, so the ability to submit an image along with your prompts or the model to consider in terms of providing a response to image analysis, classification, object detection, those types of things can be accomplished in the future when we have uh, engine model capabilities here. So very easy to switch between models and vendors. The only other way you would do that currently is by using multiple integration service connectors that require your own service instances. So again, you would have to use your authenticated instances of Azure OpenAI or Google Vertex in order to switch between models like that. So that's an added bonus. Just any other integration service connector, you will need to add a connection here. There will be multiple connections available. But again, because it is a first party service, all this entails is clicking connect. In the future, this will be a process under which you'll only have to connect to the Gen AI service once, and you'll only see one connection for the tenant. There will be additional governance audit controls available for that connection in the tenant. But again, no need to, in the future, there will be no need to manage multiple connections. 
So I select my model and then I can type in a prompt who was the winner of the 2018 poll. Great. So there's a couple of other options that are going to be available within content generation. You have the option of adding PII detection. So the use case here would be, for instance, I want to determine if any of the information submitted in the prompts has PII. And then you have also the additional option of filtering that PII. So in other words, masking the PII so that no information is submitted or no PII or PHI is submitted to the model. That might be a very important thing for users to have control over. We'll also be introducing from uh, an admin standpoint, the ability to review and monitor what activities are picking up PII so that you can offer a little bit more control, have a bit more security and auditability for these, for these activities. So lots to come in the future in the way of administration, the administration experience and governance. You will also have the ability to use context grounding. So context grounding is going to be a really powerful means by which you can add additional context to your prompt. And what that effectively means here is I could reference the files. For instance, I have a download file activity from Google Drive or from OneDrive or from a, whatever a, a file is available as part of the workflow. I can add that file. And what's going to happen in the background when I submit this prompt is we are going to be able to find the necessary context to answer the prompt. So for instance, let's say I have a file that describes a, a particular product and how it works. This is a product support use case, let's say. And I have a question that is being passed in from an email from a, a user. And I want to reference that file to get the appropriate answer. If, and imagine I might pull in that file here. Then what's going to happen is on, again, backend services for UiPath are going to traverse that file, find the most relevant information based on this problem. So let's assume this is not who was the winner of the 2008 Super Bowl, but instead who, why am I having login problems with some description of an issue from a, a customer brand, a help desk type of situation. And so I'm going to reference the file, make sure that I have given the model, the necessary information to answer the question. And that is, and this will all be answered, um, according to that context, but that's going to be a very powerful way to make LLMs accessible and usable for a specific proprietary use case, right? As opposed to just using the publicly available or public domain information that the foundation models are, are trained off of. You're also going to have the ability to reference an index and an index is basically going to be a pre populated knowledge base that has a variety of different document data that can be organized into an, uh, a knowledge base available in an orchestrator bucket. And I can traverse across that entire knowledge base and look for information that would be meaningful to answer my problem here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and select none in here just to give you a, an example of how this process might work, right? So I'm going to disable these other activities. The log message to show you the output of the content generation. Mass text is not something that I'm interested in. I'm interested in top generated. So this is going ahead and taking the output from the model, uh, and again, for my question, my query that I, I submitted here and returning the highest confidence score output. And so if I select generated text and I have it set at the log lo info log level, I should get an answer to who won the 2008, 2018. We'll let this run for a second. There it is, the Philadelphia Eagles won. Now, 
you can probably imagine that the having this prompt be static again without variables without arguments is probably not of particular interest when it comes to running repeatable processes that accomplish a, a an end-to-end business process automation use case right this activity does require that you iterate or experiment with different prompts that you are using you're pulling in variables you're pulling in arguments to make this kind of a, a meaningful activity and really relying on the large language model to offer judgment right when it comes to decision point within a, a workflow giving your robot the ability to really be intelligent and instead of having a bunch of if this then that statements you can use the uh, output of the prompt here to really supercharge your automation the next thing i'm going to show is uh, a concept that we call curated gen ai activity so basically what this means is we are going to i'm going to disable this we are going to offer a, a wide variety of activities that are common use cases that an rpa developer might be tasked with accomplishing so for instance this is a generated email activity and here you'll see again you have the ability to select models. All of the models will be available that we support from an LLM or from our internal managed service with all of the models available to all UI path products. And we have a couple of inputs here where you are going to be able to really fine tune, so to speak, the, the request to the model, but without the need to manage a, a raw prompt. So in this case, I'm going to say, hey, here's the email content that I need you to cover. I want you to write an email about quarter sales push, including motivational quotes and goals and all of that good stuff. Now, I can also add the style of writing that I want to include, and this could be something that's custom, right? So I, we have a list of, of options for you to use here, but of course you can override and, and your own. I'm gonna go ahead and go with, let's see, persuasive. I can also update the output format, so plain text or HTML. And I have a couple of additional properties, right? I could add how many words do I want the email to be. Um, I could also add examples, right? This is an example from internal email about an end of quarter push, so very similar to the email content that I'm asking for here. And it gives the model a sense of what you would expect the email to uh, emulate in terms of style, in terms of word choice, all of that good stuff. And so, great. Now, I can also have the option here to detect the input language for use in the output. If I put true, then it's going to take the email content that I have here and return the same language. If I said false, I could have this output as totally different language, right? And again, you'll have the ability to uh, override or use one of these pre-populated languages. Again, these pre-populated languages are going to be what we would recommend you can consider using as a lot of the large language models are going to be familiar with these. Some of this is, is certainly going to be a mileage may vary, particularly if you're using a, a, a less well-known language, right? So I'll just go ahead and do the input language for use and output as true here. And I am going to reference the email text in this Bob message. Let's go to the one. Great. So here you can see that it took my instructions in terms of what the email content had to consist of. Again, I'm giving that bullet point, not like I'm writing the full email. That's the job of the activity. You can imagine a lot of different use cases where generate activity would be a really meaningful 
curated activity to include in a workflow. For instance, I have, like we talked about before, I have a product support uh, query coming from a customer. I want to respond to that customer in a meaningful way. And within my content, I'll give it a expectation in terms of what it covers. And then I'm outputting something that is, is again, in line with the instructions that I'm giving the large language model here. Again, this is different than the content generation activity in the sense that we have a internally quality tested prompt that we're using underneath this activity. And we're asking you, the user, the RPA developer, to offer specific inputs that would be sent along with the activity to really make it meaningful for your specific use case. Now, this curated activity is one of many that we're planning on supporting. So if I go back to the activity back to see a couple that we're looking at here, some other very important activities that are coming down the pipe would be classification, would be named entity recognition. Um, so, so really being able to take uh, some of the use cases that maybe customers or uh, RPA developers are using document understanding or comms mining for and turn them into individual activities, again, to offer a little bit more flexibility in terms of how an RPA developer can approach a particular automation use case. Um, we'll also, as I mentioned before, be adding the vision capabilities, like I said, object detection, image classification, the, the list goes on and on. And for any of the use cases that don't have a specific curated activity, again, you can turn to content generation and build your own prompt that is meaningful for your particular use case. In the future, you're also going to be able to see, as I mentioned above here, in content generation, you'll be able to see these uh, additional context grounding available in the curated activities as well. So you could imagine for generate email, if I were to reference a knowledge base that has a, a, a huge host of different examples of emails that have been written, maybe mashing a certain brand identity or voicing in terms of the writing style, I want to reference those or referencing them in terms of extracting knowledge that needs to be added in terms of the email content. Both of those use cases are valid and would be a great way of leveraging context grounding in these activities. You can also imagine context grounding being meaningful, for instance, in summarization, right? So this is another activity that we offer in Gen AI activities where maybe I need to reference a very large knowledge base and so, or, or a document, let's say hundreds of pages in terms of summarizing that text. If I were to try to input that into text to summarize, I would very quickly run into context window limitations. So there's, of course, hard limits for the models. Some of them are much larger than others, but there are hard limits in terms of how large the prompt can be. And so using context grounding is a great way to get around that hurdle and be able to reference a, a large document or a large corpus of data and really enrich the prompts and the quality of the output coming from the model. So that's an overview of Gen AI activities. I hope that was uh, helpful. I hope it gives you a sense of where we're going in terms of adding additional uh, curated activities. And for all of those use cases that can't use the curated activities, of course, the uh, ability is there for you to become a great prompt engineer and manipulate your prompt to meet your unique need. In the future, we'll also be adding additional abilities to, for instance, hey, I have a great prompt engineer on the team. They're going to build out or iterate on the prompts, decide on the model that we're going to be using, and then they're going to create an activity out of that. That will be a totally valid use case that we look forward to supporting in the future. Thank you.